Hi everyone, this is Alex. I am back to Oxford and looking back at two weeks of COP, I must say it was an incredible experience, especially as a delegation head. I learned a lot, I saw a lot and I met lots of interesting people for which I'm very grateful. Um, now I'm back, I'm trying to recover from two weeks of having not much sleep and I just want to say thank you very much for watching our daily videos, for reading our daily blogs and especially thank you to my delegation for being really, really awesome. See you next year in Bonn at COP23. Good morning, it's Saturday in Marrakesh, the sun is shining and COP22 is over and done with. Uh, the negotiations concluded at the early hours last night um, and some sort of agreement and statement and celebration is apparently in order. Um, unfortunately on many fronts, despite the unity of 48 countries calling for 100% uh, renewable electricity generation, uh, that have committed to doing so, there's still a lack of ambition um, at the scale required to meet the goals of the Paris Agreement, particularly under 2 degrees centigrade temperature rise. Um, the biggest concern, I think, for us is that um, there have been no concrete pledges on uh, preventing the construction of any more fossil fuel power. Uh, this is going to be one of the big issues uh, in the next few years. Um, and they've decided to, to take concrete decisions in 2018, uh, but we're slightly concerned that uh, there just isn't time for doing that. Either way, the, despite the election of last week, um, the optimism is still there and every other country within the agreement has agreed to keep uh, pushing and uh, stated that they will not withdraw from, from the treaty agreed last year. So we're hopeful, but there's still a lot left to do. Thank you. Hi, my name is Yan Zhu Zhang and I'm a Master of Public Policy graduate from Bolivani School of Government, University of Oxford. I just want to say it's a great pleasure to be here as a delegate of the Young European Leadership Delegation at COP22. And this week I've been here enjoying uh, every moment at COP22. I attended different sessions and talked with negotiators from different countries and it's a great pleasure to network with people uh, from academia, from civil society, from NGOs to understand why and how we should ramp up climate actions and create a sustainable future. And um, I also enjoyed the other parties and fun parts here in COP22 and talk with young people from all over the world. It's really fun and I hope next time you could be here. Thank you. Serena here and back in California, still trying to recover and reflect on everything that happened in COP22. And coming back from a UN conference, it can be a bit overwhelming or kind of trivial coming back to your everyday life. But then I remember that I'm in the city where the United Nations was born. And movements have to start somewhere. So that could be at your workplace, that could be in your home, in your city. And I think that's really exciting. This cup was my first one, but definitely not my last. Imagine a place where influential people, businesses, organizations meet and collaborate together under similar grounds. And this is to create a momentum of action against climate change. Now you can understand how difficult it is for me to describe how amazing this experience was, but also how overwhelming it was for a cup amateur. I was everywhere at the same time, so picking up knowledge in all possible ways by attending negotiations, side events, driving discussions with climate activists, with um, really influential people. I really hope to see you in the next call. I've been back from Marrakesh for a little over a week now, which has allowed me to think about how I feel uh, coming out of this experience. And I think the first thing that's noticeable is that I feel very different than how I felt when I, uh, when I came home from Paris. After Paris, I felt really motivated and inspired and refreshed. And after Marrakesh, I, I feel very reflective. I feel reflective about my own role in this um, 
challenge and also reflective about the role of international meetings and negotiations and uh, to what extent this can even really drive change at the scale and pace that's needed. And I think um, perhaps for me, the takeaway from Marrakesh is actually that the the real action arena now is at the local or national level or in the private sector or in communities and it's not actually in this type of international forum at all um, which is actually a very hopeful message because then it gives those of us who are working in this uh, this arena a lot more power and significance in this whole, um, this whole challenge. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Casey. I'm back in Vienna here at a Christmas market. You can kind of see it. Um, reflecting on my week at COP22, an amazing, amazing experience. At times a bit frustrating because you want more to happen than is happening. You want um, more stronger decisions being made. But I think the most inspiring thing was meeting people from my generation who were really working on the ground in their countries to make differences and to make changes. And that, I think, is what, above all, I'm going to take with me th further on and throughout my life. So, yeah, amazing experience. Thank you, YL. Thank you to uh, my fellow delegates. And hopefully, here's to COP23. Thanks.